Hey gents, welcome to another edition of Prime Tips. This one, we're not going to be talking so much about the scanner. We're going to be talking about a companion piece called IITC. And for the first time, you get to see me. Hi, Agent Dewey J. Um, be looking at IITC this time, which is uh, stands for uh, Ingress Intel Total Conversion. Um, it's been around for a long time. Um, it's one of those that has a little bit of uh, history, per se. Uh, some people, there's discussion about it because it's not a tool that is released by Niantic. It is something that's been done through the community. There's been a number of people who have had this tool uh, through development. And it used to be that it was a tool that was very difficult to put in. We're going to show you the easy way to use it today and show you just a little bit of some of the things that you can do with it. But there is a little bit of controversy behind it because it does a number of things that may or may not uh, break the um, terms of service. But honestly, other than a very short time in 2013 when there was a programming error in IITC caused by a change of Intel by Niantic, nobody's ever really been banned from, by using it, that I can say. So Niantic will not officially say this is one of their tools, but... Uh, they do seem to let it live, uh, support, use. It's used a lot in um, anomalies for Saturdays. A lot of people use it. So there's probably many more agents that use it that don't use it. Uh, if you're one of the agents that said, you know, I really wanted to use it, and it was a year or two ago, and it's like, well, this is really tough because I'm having to put in maybe Tamper Monkey or Grease Monkey and in, put in scripts and APKs and all those other things. If you've looked at it before, it was just too difficult. Now's the time to get in because with IITC Community Edition, CE, it is so much easier to use. So we're going to show you how to use it, uh, how to get it, and uh, talk a little bit about it. Now, there's two platforms that you can look at, big platforms. You can use it on the desktop. You can use it on your phone. We're going to be talking mostly about the desktop today. Uh, honestly, I probably use it more on my phone than I use on the desktop, but the desktop is really good for finding information, for planning, uh, drawing out fields and things of that nature. So one place that you can get a lot of information is you, that you've been looking at here, uh, this address, which I'll put this address in the notes for you so that you can read all the information about IITC. Um, but how do you get it? Well, you would think that the easiest way to get it is just to go to Google and search for IITC. Unfortunately, if you do that, the first one you're going to see is probably something like this. And this is the older version of IITC. Uh, it was last updated, I think, in 2015, so it's about four years old. This is where you had to uh, put in uh, extra things to your browser and, and all those other things. So if, if this is where you're trying to start, you're going about it the wrong way. You can do it this way. It's still there. Uh, I don't know how much longer that will be continuing. Um, so we're not going to go that route. You can do a search for IITC button. That's probably the quickest way to get you there. IITC button. You could also search for IITC CE, uh, which would be the the community ed edition, which would bring you to a page something like this. And this, again, has the desktop and the mobile, and it has all the information about it. Um, but it's it's a lot easier. If you just want to get it, search for IITC button. Probably the first thing you're going to see is Google Chrome. Now, again, I'm using Google Chrome. Uh, you can find extensions for other browsers, uh, Firefox, Mozilla. A lot of them will have this extension that you can put on your browser and that takes care of it. Um, so let's go ahead and do the install <coughs> and see how it goes. So since I'm using Chrome, all I have to do is click on the extension, say I want to add that to Chrome. It'll say, are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. And it adds the extension. So what does it do? Well, I go back and I look at this is my stock Intel map. And again, if I want to draw things, uh, I have to draw lines and connect them and things like that. Well, once I've added this extension and I want to make sure that I've turned it on, you see the little green thing here, you'll notice that when I turned it on, that the map changed. Um, it's remembering some of my settings from before. Um, 
so you have layers and things like that and a, and a refresh would do that so you can tell that it looks a little bit different you probably are going to see it i think the default map so i think you see it something like this which you'd notice that you have this little guy over here i tend to like google roads um you could even go with google roads and traffic because this lets me know where i'm at and you also notice under this that i have a lot of check boxes so if I zoom in on something, let's zoom in on a place that I know that has a lot of different levels and may have a couple different factions with uh, owning some portals. Um, yep. So you can see this is indicating all the portals that are there. The orange ones are the portals that are not owned by anybody. Of course, the green would be the enlightened and the blue would be the resistance portals. Um, but I can come over here and I can uncheck and that gets rid of all of the unclaimed ones and all my level one portals. And now these are just portals that are not level one, a little more than that. Um, I could even go down and say, you know, I'm going to go out and I want to get some points for taking over portals. So I'm going to take out all the resistance portals and it's only going to show me those portals that are resistance or at a light. And I'm sorry. And I get rid of the unclaimed ones and there's where I need to go to, to go attack the enlightened or I can turn on the resistance. And there's, there's all the resistance ones that are up in town. Um, so you can turn these on and off as you need them. Artifacts, ornaments, be uh, beacons, frackers, those type of things. So that's pretty nice. Uh, if I want to see information about a particular portal, I can just click on it. And over here, it will load up that portal. Um, so this particular portal is called St. Anthony Catholic Church. Um, it gives me some information about hacking. So I can hack that four times. So I'll have to wait five minutes each time. Um, if there's one that is a higher level, that would change. So let's show you one that's a little higher level. Let's go to a place where I know there's one that's a higher level portal. So here, uh, that's probably not a good choice. Let's go to this guy. I think this is guy. Yeah, there, here's one. So this one, again, you've got a number of agents that are on it. Dewey J, of course. Yay. Um, but I can do four hacks and I have to wait a minute, 53 seconds between each one. And it's showing me, hey, here are the mods that are on it. Here are the different uh, agents that have put resonators on and that kind of stuff. So I can go right to that portal real quickly and I can get some information pretty quick. Um, but that's not where the real power lies. The real power lies when you start adding in scripts. Um, so we would have some things down here that I can add in while I'm here. One of the things I want to mention redeem code. Uh, so if you've got those codes, instead of having to write them down and punch them into your scanner, you can just copy and paste and throw it right in there, um, and get those codes. But let's go back up to our tool and you notice that it's showing me a number of script categories that I can add. Um, and when you click on it, I can see the things that I can add. So I can highlight inactive portals or highlight portals with ornaments on it, things like that. Um, let's go to a layer one. And you can see that you can look at portal level numbers, activity tracker, player activity tracker. Now, this is one that that is kind of one of the reasons why people talk about it as not an official tool. Um, because what player tracker does is it will look in the area for those players that are, uh, active on the map and it will show you where they've been. So if I hack here and I hack there and I hack there, it's going to track that information. And then I kind of have, uh, a map of where they have been. Um, let's look at say... I can add different maps. So if I like the gray Google map or Bing map, I can add the, that information there. Um, all kinds of portal information that you can add in. Let's look at, here's a, one I want to look at, layer count. So I'm going to turn on a layer count. And now you notice I've got this little tool over here. So as you add things, the tools will pop up in different places. Some will be up here. Most of them will be over here on the right. And I can put that off to the side. So I see that I've got a couple different fields out there. And I may I'm interested in this field. So when I look at that field, I may have to re refresh here. 
I can hit the count the nested fields. And then when I click on the map, it'll tell me one resistance field. Or I can click over here. That's two resistance fields. Or I can come up here and that's eight enlightened fields. So when you're looking at layered fields and you want to know how deep it is, that's that's a tool that you can do that. And you can turn that one off. But let's go in and turn on a number of them that uh, I would suggest that you start with. Under cache, I wouldn't play with any of those. Controls, um, bookmarks, that's definitely one that you will want. Um, the other ones I don't use much. This is where the real, real work is. You want to turn on draw tools and cross links. And we'll show you why draw tools and cross links are going to be in there. Um, Highlighter is just information on different things that are on the map. Um, and you can turn these on and off as you need. Information, again, I turned on layer count. Maybe I want to know AP so I can, when I take things out, what they are. Maybe I'd like to know an idea of what that player's level is. So I can turn that on. It's a guess. It's not really there. Uh, layers, I can turn on those things. I'll leave that layer off. Map tiles, portal information. Um, not a whole lot there that I use a lot. Tweaks. Oh, uh, we don't use much of those. Miscellaneous. I don't use much of those. So that's that's probably a lot of the ones I use a lot. You notice that it turned on some things over here. And again, I'll just click out here and that goes away. Um, so this would give me a list of all of the portals that I have bookmarks and you can turn things on and off. Um, let's go in and look at it a little bit. Um, so I'm going to get in here close and let's say that I'm, I want to do a little bit of fielding. I noticed that I've got two points. Maybe I want to put a number of third points in there. I have some tools that I can use here. Um, I of course can just, I can just draw a line all over. Um, and then if I want to turn that off, so you notice that it put a dotted line across this because it drew a line across it. And since I have cross links on, it tells me, hey, this particular line goes across it. But this isn't really attached to a portal or anything. I could take all that stuff off. I'm going to go in here and I'll clear everything. So let's say I want to do a little bit of planning. So I'm going to start with a portal, uh, this one here. So you notice when I click it, I get all the information about that portal. And there's a little star here. And that puts it on my bookmarks. And in this particular case, it also puts it on that. So I could take it on and off. So I've got that one. And let's say that I know I want this one. So I turn that one on. So once I've got those on, uh, I want to start looking at things down here. So I have some things with tools, drawing, auto draw and draw tools. Um, again, there's a whole lot more stuff here, but we're just going to keep it simple. So let's look at draw tools to start with. So I can copy the drawn items once I've got them all done. I can paste them in. I can import and export. I can reset, uh, which just gets rid of all the things that I've already drawn. Here's the one you want, which is auto draw. So when auto draw is on, you notice that I'm not pulling a line between the two. I get the names of the two. So when I click one and click two, I can draw and view. I can draw it or I can just say, OK, so I'm going to draw. And it drew that line in. So there's my baseline. Well, let's say I th I know there's a lot of stuff in here. Let's say we want to do some fielding in here. So let's zoom in and get that out of my way. Oop. Get this out of my way for now. And it loads in. And so I got a number of portals and I want them in a row. And just to be nice, let's say we want to take out some of these uh, enlightened portals as we go. So I'll click on that one and I'll bookmark it. And I'll click on this one and I'll bookmark it and this one and I'll bookmark it and this one, oops, excuse me, and this one and I'll bookmark it. So I've got those in there. Oh, what the heck? Let's add one more. So those are in there. Now, instead of drawing lines like I do on the regular Intel map, I can go to auto draw. And with auto draw, I can pick two. And when I pick the last one, I can hit draw. And it drew that in. Now you notice that it cleared the selection because I have this clear selection after drawing checked. If I want to go really fast on a bunch of them, I'll take that off. So I'll take my baseline and then I'll add this one. Pink. And I'll take that one off and add this one. Pink. 
that one off, add this one, bink, that one off, add this one, bink. Okay, so I've got a map really quick of uh, some layered fields. So it looks like I'd have one, two, three, four, five layers, um, five polygons. So that would be five layers deep. And I would know that I need to have keys for this anchor and that anchor. If I had like five of them, I could go into these particular ones, take it over, throw this one, throw this one, throw this one, throw this one, and away I go. So with the draw tool options, options, I can copy those. I can copy this information and then I can send it in text or I can save it to a text file or something like that. Um, a number of ways that you can share that information. Um, so that's kind of the basics of drawing with it. You can see that it's really quick and it's really nice. Um, one other thing that you might want to look at is region scores. So this is given the scores for the regions. Uh, you can see each individual CP. It looks like we're three hours and 12 minutes to the next checkpoint at midnight. Um, checkpoint overview. So you can look at the, the individual uh, times that it picked it up. Um, so checkpoint 22. Resistance had 16K, Enlighten had 5K, kind of lightened this one. Um, and it gives you the, the actual checkpoint number and those kind of things. And who's the active people in the field, in the cell? Not me this time. It's uh, one of these other ones. And you notice that it will give you an idea of, of the level of those particular players. Um, there's a lot more that you can do with it. Uh, but I just wanted to give you the idea of how it works, uh, portal link, so I can get a link to a particular portal, and it puts it up there. Um, I can do maps, map links, and things like that. So that's the desktop version. Um, also, if you look on the IITC, there is a mobile version. So with the mobile version, again, it depends upon your weapon of choice, whether you're using an Android phone or you're using uh, an Apple iOS phone. Um, you click on Google Play, click on the Apple Store. So I go to Apple Store, then I can download it and put it on, which I'm not seeing it there because I don't have an Apple phone that's attached to this or Google Play. And actually, mine's already set up, I, but you would just hit this little button here and it would install it to your phone. And that's a total different thing. But uh, we'll come back and we'll revisit uh, IITC a little bit more. Uh, because it's a really neat tool. It's really easy to use. And I would say it's as official as it gets without being official. So thanks a lot. Talk to you next time, agents. Bye.